Sometimes when you're watching the peak of any competition, you get this feeling that something epic is happening, that you'll remember what you're seeing for years to come. It might sound crazy, but this happened to me and hundreds of other Scrabble fans during the finals of the 2023 World Scrabble Championship between David Eldar and Harshan Lamabadu Surya. After four grueling days of play, David and Harshan had secured the top two spots in the standings and earned the right to play a best of seven match to determine the 2023 world champion. The result was one of the most entertaining and unforgettable matches in Scrabble history. David and Harshan have long been regarded as two of the top players in competitive Scrabble. In fact, six years earlier, the two grandmasters met in the finals of the 2017 World Championship as well. David won that best of five series, three games to zero, to secure his first championship. In their 2023 rematch, Harshan sought to win his first World Championship title to add to his UK National Championship while David hoped to join Nigel Richards as the only players ever to win multiple world championships. Oh, and there was also a $10,000 top prize on the line. Harshan opens the first game of the finals with his best move of Fjord and immediately draws the first blank. David plays Quaff for 34, scoring well and obstructing the eye of Fjord, except that Harshan still spots the beautiful bingo of Ministry for 109 points with three overlaps, seizing a commanding lead. David answers back with Nitrated and Itchy for 61 and 56 points, but faces a critical decision with a 38-point deficit and a tricky 3R rack. He decides to play Fariner for 86 points, but in an exceedingly rare occurrence for him, it's not a valid word, as he's likely conflating Farrier and Furriner. Harshan immediately challenges it off the board and takes command from there, and by the time David manages to bingo with Scavage, Harshan is able to respond with a 75-point Zowie to finish off Game 1 with a win. Given that he failed to win a game against David in the 2017 match, this opening round win surely felt good for Harshan. But Scrabble momentum can turn on a dime. In Game 2, after his opening exchange, David lights up the scoreboard with five straight turns of 60 points or greater, including four bingos and the Z-bomb of Luz. Harshan fights valiantly with Errantly and Frailty, but David's onslaught is too massive, and he quickly equalizes the series at one game apiece. Harshan has the first move in Game 3 and opens with Mopiest, but David answers with Carry On and meets Harshan's air shows with Signaled using the second blank, his only double-double, to recapture the lead. Soon, Harshan draws into two different bingos with the X, Exitance and Exigent. The latter creates a huge spot for the Z with that tile still lurking, so Harshan plays Exitance instead, and it's a good thing he does because David would have been ready to strike with the Z. Harshan then ends up drawing the critical H, allowing him to score 50 points in the upper right corner, putting David into an extremely difficult late game situation. There's three tiles in the bag, and although he's facing only a small deficit, with only one-point tiles, he doesn't have any great scoring options. His highest scoring move, Sintan for 27, puts him up by only one point and allows Harshan to gain an advantage in the endgame, likely giving Harshan two moves to David's one. So, David plays the simple-looking 10 for 6 points, leaving himself good tiles to bingo at the bottom of the board. But, 10 does much more than that. It also sets up a sneaky place for an A to play between the R and 10 with the word Rattan. And, if David manages to draw the combination of 1A and 1E, he'll now be able to play Sealant, as a bingo at the top of the board. Note that this would not have been playable prior to 10, as RA is not a valid word. 
With two A's and two E's available to draw in the unseen tiles, this is as likely an outcome as David can hope for. And there's also the ER combination for slanter in the same spot as well. Additionally, if Harshan had had an A on his play of Pith, it's likely he would have played Path instead, since he would have been holding the last I with no chance of duplicating it. For that reason, playing his A instead to avoid drawing a duplicate A would have made more sense. This slightly increases David's odds of drawing his much needed A from the bag. From Harshan's point of view, there are now threats David can have at both the top and bottom of the board, and he can't block both. This is why Tan is a stunningly resourceful play from David to create space on the board for a bingo, and it very nearly works. The three tiles in the bag in this particular scenario are A-E-O, but instead of the A-E that he needs, David draws A-O. This draw does threaten the bingo of Sonantal through the end of Beanie, but Harshan is able to block it with Ugly, and after a relatively simple endgame, Harshan wins game three by a comfortable margin. Still, you can hear in Harshan's post-game reaction how impressed he was by David's amazing play of Tan. Can you, would you mind telling me what you're fishing for? Sealant. Oh, that's, I did. that's brilliant. I did. That's really lovely. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That was brilliant. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. When the finalists return from lunch break for game four, the fireworks start up again nearly instantly. On his third turn, David plays loitering through IT on the board as a nine-letter bingo, and two turns later, he follows up with the beautiful lukewarm with a blank W to the M in the upper right corner. Harshan immediately answers back with equating for 122 across two double word scores to retake the lead. But David soon draws the second blank and plays positive for 83, and immediately follows it up with Supremo for 78. Meanwhile, Harshan's bingo tiles never quite come together, and David wins comfortably in Game 4 to equalize the series once again at two games apiece. In Game 5, Harshan strikes twice in a row on his third and fourth turns with Vermind and the archaic Tukist to take a solid lead. Later, facing a difficult situation holding six vowels and the blank, many players would be tempted to exchange tiles, but Harshan spots the clever Aguti through a G and T to shed four vowels and push his lead up further to withstand David's potential bingos. A few turns later, David makes the clever choice of Craniate when he could have played Carinate in the same spot, clearly hoping to threaten a big spot for the X that Harshan will need to deal with, and potentially snag the second blank as well. Harshan already has the blank, though, and wisely blocks the X spot before David can play X'd there for 57. He's still able to play it in the upper right, but Harshan ends the game with an impressive out bingo of Resemble hooking cute for 81 points to retake the series lead at three games to two. In game six, desperately needing a win to prolong the series, David opens with his only bingo of Protege, but Harshan answers back immediately with Epitaxes. David's awful post-bingo draw forces him to exchange while Harshan plays a crushing overlap of Lazed for 65. With one more big play, Harshan might start to taste victory, but David draws Snifter and the game is even again. Next, Harshan has the huge overlap of Omen for 46 points, but elects to simply play his Q for 21. His remaining letters don't look like anything special, but they actually combine surprisingly well with other tiles to form bingos, including draws of the A, E, and C. Great recognition by Harshan. They also form an obscure bingo with a U of Muscone, and that's exactly what Harshan draws. But he arranges his letters as Unsmoke instead, likely considering the G of Protege and weighing whether Gunsmoke is valid. It's not in the Scrabble Dictionary, so he does well to pass it up, but while Omen scores a strong 46 points, 
that 81 points for Muscone would have been very helpful for him here. Still, a couple turns later, Harshan gets his bingo down with Entasia and draws the second blank. He spots his two options immediately, a video fit through the V and Tenioid with overlaps. And when David plays Wolf to block video fit, Harshan's play of Tenioid puts him up by 51 points, placing him on the brink of becoming world champion. With the unplayable account on his rack, David has a great scoring play of CatCon hooking the C to Hunk to make Chunk for 47 points, bringing the score extremely close to even. But here he makes a play that will be remembered for a long time. Cut! Hooking the T onto Taxed and the U onto Llama for the obscure U-Llama, scoring 31 points instead. Why would David play a word for 31 points when he has a 47-point play available? The answer has to do with the unseen letters. There are 15 letters unseen to David here, and only 5 of them are vowels. Not only that, several of the unseen letters combine poorly with the U David would leave after CatCon, including another U, the V, two I's, and two G's. By playing cut instead, David is able to shed his U, score decently, while also keeping his more useful vowels with the expectation of drawing lots of consonants. And because he has both C's and all of the T's have been played, he's the only one who can hook hunk to reach the triple word score productively on a future turn. This is absolutely brilliant recognition of the game situation. Though Harshan is still ahead, he finds himself in a brutal spot, knowing that David likely has the other C, but having no effective way to block Chunk without either giving up a good bingo lane to David with something like Ovular, or without scoring dangerously few points for something like Vrow through the O of Ouija. He settles on Viol parallel to Bonham, which should often be enough to win. In fact, Ovular would have given David Gonadic to instantly win, so Harshan dodges a bullet. But with one tile left in the bag, David immediately plays Coding and Chunk for 50 points to take a 9-point lead, knowing his remaining A will pair well with anything he draws from the bag. Meanwhile, Harshan's draw of four consonants from the bag dooms him, just as it would have doomed David had he played CatCon instead of Cut. Harshan plays Fubar, which is both as good of a play as he has, as well as somewhat self-descriptive, and David goes out with Ran hooking Viola to finish off an incredible win in Game 6. Of course a series like this would go to a deciding Game 7, and it's Harshan's move to begin. He draws the first blank and plays Echoier to get off to a fast start, while David plays Rewater holding the Z, setting up a potentially huge place to play it with overlaps forming Za. But Harshan plays the stylish Peponita for a second straight bingo, and even after David's Z-bomb, Harshan's got the early lead. Drawing three I's and the Q slows him down, though, and several moves later, David bingos with the second blank, playing Versing for 97. Harshan's rack has gone south after his six-tile play of Curdle, and without many other options, he extends Versing to Reversing for 36 points. However, this move retains the brutal E-O-U-U-W combination for next turn, which will often result in an exchange. Another possibility for him is re-1 for the same score of 36 points. The E-U-U leave isn't very good either, but it's a fair bit better than E-O-U-U-W, as it at least sheds the W and uses two more tiles to try and draw better consonants. Sure enough, after David's Who for 28, Harshan is forced to exchange. David plays Flit and puts Harshan in a difficult spot. There's nothing inspiring to play here, and Harshan places the obscure 
Awe on the board, scoring little, but balancing his rack and perhaps hoping to draw a bingo along row two or to the R of Echo Ear. But at the last minute, he changes his mind and plays Moo, scoring a few more points. The only problem is that lose is an obscure word for a contagious disease or plague, not a plural. L-U-E isn't in the dictionary. David quickly challenges, and realizing his mistake, Harshan doesn't even get up from the table to check this word. Remember, this is the 39th game of Scrabble these two players have played in the last five days. Whether it's due to fatigue, the pressure of being in a decisive Game 7, or just a momentary lapse in concentration, this mistake by Harshan is completely understandable and relatable. But it's a huge break for David, who seizes control of the game, and several turns later, he plays Daunters to surge far into the lead. Somehow, Harshan's rack of mailers doesn't play as a bingo anywhere, and after fishing off one tile to set up a new bingo lane, David needs only to score enough points to outrun the eventual bingo, which he does with women for 45. Harshan's final bingo of Ramilies narrows the gap somewhat, but the outcome is already decided. David Eldar ends up winning this epic series, four games to three, securing his second world championship. With this win, David joins Nigel Richards as the only players ever to win multiple world championships. While he showcased his incredible word knowledge throughout the series, it was his strategic brilliancies with simple words like tan and cut that stood out in this match. On the other hand, Harshan's consistently strong play and incredible sportsmanship earned him the respect of his peers and of the viewing audience. I mean, I think I'm getting close, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, uh, so hopefully next time I'll, I'll get you, right? Yeah, we okay, better not yeah, play again. Third time lucky. <laughs> this was elite Scrabble at its most entertaining, and it felt like Scrabble history being made in real time as I watched along. I hope you enjoyed watching this recap and join me in congratulating these two finalists on an incredible series.